Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. So, hope everybody had fun in a live stream last night. As usual, it was a raucous, interesting, who knew where we were going night. But, all right. Uh, so, a lot of the conversation last couple of days has been about the jab and all that. But I want to get into something a little bit more pertinent here. Uh, you know, a kitchen table issue, if you will. And that's talking about money. All right, which you know, we all need to pay the bills, to eat, to do whatever. So yesterday, day before, I was talking about inflation and Bank of America coming up and saying, oh my God, you know, we're at 12% inf inflation, which we've talked about ad nauseum before, and we're not economists getting paid millions of dollars to figure it out. We go to the grocery store and figure it out, or the auto parts store, or Walmart, or whatever it was, but we see the price of everything going up. Well... Seems that B of A uh, has kind of enlightened the masses here uh, because now you have JP Morgan chiming in saying we can expect to see higher inflation throughout the summer. You have uh, uh, Goldman Sachs coming in saying the same thing that uh, inflation is going to be going through the roof, uh, which doesn't surprise anybody. Okay. I mean, you know, inflation's pretty simple. There's too much money and not enough product, you know, so what does that cause? It's a bidding war, and we've talked about that all the time. You know, people have money. It's like, oh, you know, a two-by-four used to be two bucks. Now a two-by-four is seven bucks. Well, as long as people are paying seven dollars for the two-by-four, do you think Georgia Pacific has any idea to ever reduce the cost of a two-by-four? No, because even if people go back to work and they're still making the two by fours and now they're getting enough into Home Depot or whatever, uh, George Pacific's going, well, well, if everybody's paying seven bucks a two by four, let's just keep charging seven bucks a two by four. Okay. But again, <clears throat> like we've all said, nobody's paycheck is going up 12%, 20%. Uh, I said the other day that uh, I, I could see 20% inflation by the end of the year. And it was just amazing that uh, that's what J.P. Morgan said today. You know, so here's the funny one. Uh, so first quarter numbers are finally in official, okay? And the government is telling us inflation for the first quarter was 1.6%. Who the hell are they crapping, all right? Because, you know, multiply that out over four quarters and that's 6.4%. Yeah, no. We're at, if we're at 12 right now, I don't see price of everything coming down uh, significantly. So, you know, again, we talk about more money than there is product. Now, we all know that companies can't find work or workers, let's put it that way. Uh, so that's the supply chain issue that we've got. You know, we know, it, like I just mentioned, the cost of lumber. Uh, now, I can tell you this about lumber, and somebody else had emailed me about the same thing about uh, you know logs being just stacked up like crazy, and the sawmills just can't find people to work to turn the logs into lumber. I can say this with one hundred percent certainty because there's a logging operation that is going on right here in my town right now, and every day I'm passing logging trucks, okay. And in the next town up, where my Walmart, my grocery store, and everything like that is in Taswell, there is a huge lot stacked with logs and more logs and more logs and more logs. And they're just sitting there. The guys are cutting down the trees, just nowhere to go because nobody will cut them. Now, I can't say anything about this, but I was told over the weekend... Because again, you got to remember, I live in a very forested area. And so when people clear off lots, a lot of what they'll do is cut all the trees and sell the trees. And that helps offset the cost of buying the lot. Okay. So somebody was telling me where the people used to get 10 to 15 bucks a tree, they're now getting a thousand bucks a tree. I'm just saying this is what I was told. I cannot verify that. Okay. But so now you think about. If you're getting a thousand bucks a tree, I got a lot of trees on my lot. Okay. Uh, not that I want to get rid of them. But if all of a sudden you own a, a real wooded lot, sure, get rid of all those 
trees and you can make a small fortune out of it. Okay, now granted, you got to pay the people to cut the trees and haul the trees and everything like that. But even if that's half of it and you're still netting 500 bucks a tree, you're not complaining. You didn't do anything for it anyway. Damn thing grew on its own. But if the logs are all sitting there and nothing's getting done, hence we have no end product, no finished lumber, if you will, to build a house, to build whatever, okay? Put a new deck on or anything like that. Talk. So again, we still have the problem with all these people collecting this $300 extra in unemployment on top of whatever they get. And oh, now there's talk of a fourth stimmy check coming out. And all that's doing is pumping more money into the economy, okay? Which I get people are going, you know, hey, I've been out of work or whatever it is, and money's helping me out or whatever. The problem is it's got to go some. It's got to come from somewhere, okay? And all these lies that you get of, oh, they're only going to tax the rich, okay? When have you ever known the Democrats to run away from a tax? You know, they're saying $400,000 now in income, okay? And you get your taxes to go up or whatever, you know, however much, it's 60 some odd thousand dollars or whatever it is, okay? You know, I got no problem with taxing Walmart and Exxon and Bill Gates and Warren Buffett more. I don't think anybody does. The problem is, if uh, you all know what AMT is, okay, the alternative minimum tax that was established back in the 70s, they never indexed that to inflation. And AMT was supposed to do exactly that, tax the high income earners. Now, go back to the 70s and you were making $300 a week, you were making good money, okay? And they were taxing people that made, you know, AMT was like anything over $75,000 or something like that. Well, over the course of time, your middle-class income got up to $75,000. And now the middle-class people had to pay that AMT tax on top of it. So every December, Congress has to put a fix in to postpone it for another year. The same thing is going to happen with this $400,000 tax, especially if they keep pumping money into the economy. Stimulus checks, unemployment, all this sort of stuff. Because as the prices keep going up of everything, okay, you know, like I said, you know, you got a $10 loaf of bread now. Nobody's going to go to work for $10, okay? I can go, I'm going to work for an hour for a loaf of bread. Hell no, they're not going to do that. You know, it's like, all right. Bread used to be two bucks a loaf. Now it's ten bucks a loaf. I used to get paid ten dollars an hour. Now I want fifty dollars an hour, because then five hour or you know one hour work buys five loaves of bread, just like it did before. So that's what you're looking at. So think about in my example a minimum wage of thirty five bucks an hour or thirty eight dollars an hour, whatever seven and a quarter, whatever it is, is multiplied out to. Well, so what do you get? How does this all happen? Well, if anybody noticed, okay, and some people might have, some people might not, there is a letter being sent by uh, about 40 congressmen, I bet you can guess which, con which party from, okay, that are all saying that we need, the government needs to give a $2,000 check per person to everybody until the pandemic is over every month. Now, you know, I know, and everybody else with two brain cells knows that they'll never let the pandemic be over in that case. $2,000 a month is the UBI figure they want. But I want you to know this one and think about how this affects inflation. Like I said, if there's more money, okay, how it goes. As of 2019, the last time I can get any sort of numbers, the adults over 18, so 18 and above in this country, totaled 209,128,094 people 18 or older in the country. You can assume that's probably gone up, but I'm going to use this number. Multiply that out times $2,000 a month. That means the checks that the Treasury would have to cut every month is $418,256,188,000. Now, I'm going to ask you this one. We have all heard over and over and over for our entire lives that the Democrats want to cut the defense budget, right? 
oh my God, we're spending too much money on defense. We're spending too much money on defense. That's the first place they want to cut, cut every time, to the military, right? Okay. The 200, uh, 2019 defense budget was $697 billion for a year. Okay, but it's perfectly okay to pay $418 billion a month to people. So literally what these 40 Democrats that are running this bill want to do is they want to take in a month and a half, pay out the same amount of money as what as the defense budget is for a year that they've bitched about forever. Other expenditures, let's talk about the most expensive expenditure for the U.S. government. Okay, That is Medicare, Medicaid, uh, whole nine yards there, government insurance, $1.1 trillion. That's less than three months of this. Let's add the second biggest expense. That's Social Security. Now, granted, Social Security is our money. We gave it to them. They just pissed it all away, and so now they got to figure out how to come back with it. Okay, That's another $1 trillion. So we had Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Affordable Care Act, all that sort of stuff in it, $2.1 trillion. That's five months, okay? Now you add in the defense, which is the number three at 697. We're at what, uh, 2.8 trillion at that point. Now we're at seven months of paying this. Then you add your safety net programs. Okay, so this is gonna be food stamps. This is gonna be section eight. This is going to be welfare, whatever it is. That's 361 billion. So there's $3 trillion. That's seven and a half months of this paying this off. So you are taking all the discretionary spending of the government every year. So we'd have nothing in Social Security, nothing in Medicare and Medicaid, nothing in social safety nets, and no defense spending whatsoever. So we could pay off $2,000 a month to every person in the United States for seven and a half months. Where is this money coming from? This is inflation. Okay. So when you know you don't think about it but inflation is the tax that you are going to be paid so when they tell you four hundred thousand dollars and up as those are the people that are going to pay for this my answer to that is bullshit okay because when i do have to pay ten dollars for a loaf of bread or i want to go to mcdonald's and it's 22 dollars for a big mac uh yeah, that's where it's coming from guys okay so I've said a million times again, and I'm going to say it again. Precious metals, silver, gold, whatever you want to do. 100 to 1 ratio, 100 ounces of silver, then you go buy your first ounce of gold. Okay, That's the way it is. Silver finished out today somewhere, or Tuesday night, somewhere around 2660, I think it was. Okay, uh, Still able to get, including premiums, uh, silver right around 31 bucks an ounce. I'd still be buying it, guys. So... You know, but there's the numbers, okay, of what Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and the rest of the cast of clowns in Washington are trying to stuff through and make everything. Oh, two thousand dollars, that'll help. And there's a lot of people. Two thousand dollars would help. I understand, okay. But two thousand dollars goes to every person over eighteen. You tell me, does Bill Gates need another two thousand dollars every month? Does Warren Buffett need another $2,000 every month? Does Elizabeth Warren need $2,000 more every month? Does Nancy Pelosi need $2,000 more every month? No. Okay. Better idea. Why don't you do something like Montana just came up with, and they're going to use any federal funds they get to entice people to go back to work rather than entice people to stay home from work? They're not going to take any of these federal funds and say, you get to stay home and collect a check. They're going, you go back to work, you stay there and work at least a month, and then we're going to give you a bonus for going back to work, okay? Because the unemployment crap is bye-bye, okay? That's the way it should be. Ugh. Economics is really frustrating, especially when you got idiots in charge. Uh, and I haven't figured out if you got anybody who isn't an idiot, red or blue, in Washington, because these guys are on a spending spree with your money and my money that they don't care about because, you know, John Kerry, you know, Bernie Sanders and his four houses or whatever it is, 
You think they care if it's a $10 loaf of bread? They couldn't tell you what the cost of loaf of bread is. They haven't seen the inside of grocery store in 20 years. Okay. You know, they just, you know, at the end of the month, their accountant comes up and says, you owe $67,000 for your household expenses. And I go, no, here's a check. They have no idea what it was spent on. You know, I mean, but again, remember, these are the guys that, you know, paid for your $2,200 hammer and your $30,000 toilet. So, all right, long one this morning, but there you go. Economics is not something that you just go and we're done. So have a good Wednesday, guys. Pinball out.